In this lecture, we're going to briefly discuss the theory that is used in particle physics, known as the Standard Model. And we're also going to touch base on the lecture weak theory. We go, we're going to look at spontaneous symmetry breaking and briefly discuss the Higgs boson particle and the Higgs field. So what exactly is the standard model? Well, the standard model is the theory that is used in particle physics to describe and explain the way that our particles interact with one another on the subnuclear level. So what this theory basically states is the following. All the different types of forces that exist in nature, for example, the electromagnetic force, the weak nuclear force, the strong nuclear force, all, this, all these different types of forces are actually carried or mediated by fundamental particles. And the way that particles interact with one another is actually by exchanging these fundamental particles that carry or mediate our forces. For example, let's take two electrons and let's suppose two electrons are approaching one another. Now as these two electrons get closer, eventually they will get close enough and at that point one of those electrons will release a photon. And as it releases that photon, that electron recoils and travels in the other direction to conserve momentum. Now as that photon travels, that photon photon is said to carry or mediate the electromagnetic force that exists between our two electrons. And when the second electron gains that photon, it absorbs that photon and also recoils and travels in the opposite direction. So our two electrons approach, eventually they exchange that photon that carries the electromagnetic force and travel in the opposite direction. So and in this manner, particles interact with one another by exchanging these fundamental particles that are carriers of our different types of forces. And this is what the standard model basically tells us about how the particles interact with one another. Now, there are many different types of fundamental particles. A fundamental particle is any particle that is believed to have no internal structure. And there are three major subcategories to the fundamental particle. So we have the quarks. The quarks are basically those fundamental particles that compose other particles known as hadrons. For example, one type of a hadron is the proton. And the proton consists of two up quarks and one down quark. Another example is the neutron. The neutron consists of a single up quark and two down quarks. Now, another type, another subcategory of the fundamental particle is the lepton. So so we have six leptons. We have the electron, the tau, the muon, as well as their corresponding neutrinos. And finally, we have the gauge bosons. The gauge bosons are those fundamental particles that we discussed of earlier. So these are the particles that are set to carry or mediate the different forces that exist in nature. So we have the photon, which carries the electromagnetic force as we described earlier. We have the gluon, which is said to carry the strong nuclear force, also known as the color force. For example, the way that the quarks combine to form the proton or neutron is by exchanging these fundamental gauge bosons known as gluons. So next up, we have the W and Z bosons. These bosons, these particles, are the particles that are said to carry or mediate the, the weak nuclear force. So basically, if we examine radioactive decay, for example, the beta negative decay, 
that beta negative decay takes place as a result of these particles that carry the weak interactions, the weak nuclear forces. And finally, we have something known as the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson is a particle that is said to carry or mediate our Higgs field that we'll talk about in just a moment. So, let's move on to the electroweak theory. So, what exactly is the electroweak theory? Well, the electroweak theory is a theory that basically combines or unifies the two different forces, the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force, into a single force known as the electroweak force. So basically, with the discovery of the W and Z boson, the discovery and experimental verification of these two gauge bosons led to the validation of the electroweak theory, as did the discovery of the Higgs boson, as we'll see in just a moment. So basically, when the universe was very, very hot, what this theory states is the following. The photon, the W boson, and the Z boson were basically particles that were very, very similar, if not identical. And these particles all carried the same exact force known as the electroweak force. Now, as the universe cooled, what happened was the electroweak force split into two different forces. The electromagnetic force, which was now carried by the photon, and the nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, which was now carried by the W and Z boson. Now, when the splitting took place, our W and Z bosons gained a lot of mass. So before the splitting, the photon, the W and Z bosons were very similar. But after our splitting, the photon basically remained massless, but the W and Z boson gained a lot of mass. And the way that we explain how this mass was gained by the W and Z boson is by using the Higgs boson particle, as we'll see in just a moment. So, once again, with experimental verification of the W and Z bosons, these particles provided necessary evidence to unify the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force into a single force known as the electroweak force. Now, according to this electroweak theory, when the universe was very hot, the electromagnetic and the weak nuclear forces were combined into a single force known as the electroweak force. However, as the universe cooled, the electroweak force basically split into the electromagnetic force, which was now carried by photons, and the weak nuclear force, which was now carried by the W and Z bosons. Now, when the universe was very hot, as I mentioned earlier, the particles, the photon W and Z bosons, these particles, basically carried one force we call the electroweak force. And these particles were essentially identical. They were very similar. However, when the universe actually uh, cooled, we had the splitting take place, and somehow the W and Z bosons gained this great quantity of mass. So the mass of the W and Z bosons is about 80 times the mass of the proton and the photon, as we know, is basically massless. The question is, what exactly happened? What event took place that caused these two bosons, the W and Z bosons, to actually gain this great quantity of mass? So in 2012, the Higgs boson particle was basically confirmed experimentally, and this basically helped us validate the electroweak theory. It helped us unify this electromagnetic force and our weak nuclear force into a single force known as the electroweak force that existed when the universe was very, very hot. So, 
This theory, the electroweak theory, was validated when the physicists discovered the Higgs boson particle in 2012. The Higgs boson is said to carry or mediate the Higgs field, and this Higgs field basically acts on any particle that has mass. Now, this Higgs field was basically believed to cause spontaneous symmetry breaking. Spontaneous symmetry breaking is the event that basically led to the splitting of our W and Z boson and our photon to split our electroweak force into the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force. So what the Higgs field did is it acted on the W and Z bosons which had a very very small amount of mass and it slowed them down. And as it slowed the velocity of these two particles, they gained mass as a result. And that's exactly what gave the W and Z boson these particles so much mass. So, once again, the standard model is basically the theory that is used in particle physics to describe the way that particles interact with one another. And in particle physics, according to this model, our particles interact by exchanging the various gauge bosons. These are our fundamental particles. Now, the electroweak theory is a theory within the standard model that basically explains or unifies the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force into a single force, the electroweak force, which was believed to exist when the universe was very, very hot. And with the discovery of the Higgs boson particle that is believed to carry or mediate the Higgs field, we were basically able to finally explain how spontaneous symmetry breaking to, uh, took place, how the photon, the W and Z boson split and became so different from one another.